Hi, welcome to Dreamcatcher, coming to you today from Haiti. I'm your host, Robin Hardin. We're going to start today's program on the sunny beaches of Haiti, but we're going to travel deep into the dark country of voodoo. But first, I'm going to help my guest, Isabel, fellow missionary, find peace through understanding a dream. We aren't even in Haiti when she comes up with a dream. We're actually sitting in the Miami airport. Watch and see what the Lord is saying to her. <laughs> We're sitting at the Miami airport and I'm here with my fellow missionary, um, Isabel, and she has a dream she's going to share. Yes, okay, so when I was in Myanmar, um, we had a lot of spiritual warfare. I even had a fever, and I had a fever dream one night, and I had, I'm telling about the Scientology dream, and I had this dream that um, I was in Venice Beach on the boardwalk, and there was this Scientology building, like a library, which they have a ton of them in L.A., and I walked into this building, and I'm, I've been, like, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and I'm running down the aisles, and I'm telling everyone about Jesus and the Holy Spirit, and that, like, turn to God, turn it around, He's real, He's powerful, He's here. He's alive. And, and, and then this big burly guy chases me out to the front door. And I, as second I got out the front door, he stopped chasing me. But then I went back the next day, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and same thing. Just running down the aisles. I keep having these dreams about Scientology. And um, and especially in L.A., there's buildings everywhere. I don't yeah. know if you, you yeah. know this, but... Yeah, we don't have them in Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's very popular in uh, Dianetics and all of that. But, um, yeah, that's... It's one of the most um, oppressive, and I mean, they take your money, and then you get so far into it that they tell you um, <laughs> that your whole religion's based on this Z new guy coming down. There's volcanoes, there's souls exploding out of volcanoes, atomic bombs, and people are like, I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars, and my whole family's in this, and if I leave, then I lose my family and I've lost all this money and so people are afraid to leave. And there's just abuses happening. I mean, it's, just, it's, it's not good, but so, yeah. So what do you think that dream means? Well, definitely God wants me to do something with Scientology, get empowered. Um, you can just walk into these libraries. And so I'm thinking maybe at some point he'll just empower me and I'll walk through those libraries and be like, you don't even know Holy Spirit's in here. Amen, amen. <laughs> Tear it up. This is my fourth trip to Haiti. Always in the past we've stayed at a guest house with um, sketchy electricity and not very comfortable beds and several of us piled in a room together, which has been wonderful. You get to really experience the culture of Haiti and the people that live there every day. But we got here and we had a, quite a surprise. And one of my spiritual leaders back home sent me Philippians 4.13 that basically said, expect the unexpected. And boy, we got the unexpected when we got here. Instead of being at the guest house that we normally stay at, we were at the De Cameron Resort, right on the beach. It's beautiful. We're we'll doing the day, like today was our first day. And we went and we did a Bible study. We talked to the people about justification and sanctification. One of the ladies taught on the vine and the branches. But during the heat of the day, we come back and we rest. And I enjoy the shade and the fans while some of the ladies are at the pool. Later, we're going to go and do crusades and tell people about God and how much He really loves them and how free He is because voodoo is a religion here, but it's not free. It costs a lot. I want to give you an idea of where I am. Look around. Yeah, I didn't even know that. 
We have driven two hours way, way up into the mountains to this remote village where we're going to have a crusade. The people are so welcoming. It's a beautiful canal going through so they can have water. And as you can see, it's quite a few people here. Well, uh, we're here with a team of, I think, seven people, including me, from, from the United States. And uh, the organization that arranged this uh, trip is CMC International Ministries. The CMC stands for Church Multiplication Coalition. And the purpose of these trips is to plant Christian churches in Haiti. Um, this particular week, they were here just for one week. We are having classes each morning with a group of mostly church members from a local church, uh, teaching them more about the Bible. And then each evening we are putting on a crusade each night in a different location. Um, some, some of the locations, like last night, are quite a ways away from town. So, uh, you know, we drove for, I think, an hour and a half to get there turned out to be a beautiful location and uh, we had a good turnout. Uh, we have a, a group from one of the churches playing music, uh, usually at least one person on guitar, one on keyboard, one on drums, and a singer or two. And uh, they make music, loud music, uh, around dusk and, and, and that brings the people out. Uh, after dark in Haiti, there's nothing for anyone to do. There's no TV, and uh, you know there are no stores. You can't go shopping, so uh, they're drawn to anything like this. So uh, after we have a good crowd that's gathered, uh, we preach a gospel message and uh, tell them about what Jesus Christ did for them, that it's a free gift of salvation, um, and uh, invite them to come forward to receive Jesus Christ. And we, uh, even before they, we invite them to come forward, we say a prayer with them that they can join in, uh, repeat after us, uh, and the prayer is one where uh, they accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and uh, invite the Holy Spirit to come into them to bless their lives, their family, their work, and, uh, and, uh, and thank God for His, His Son's sacrifice. So uh, we did that last night and then Robin Harden said a, a nice prayer for everyone because we couldn't, we had too many people to invite them all forward uh, to pray for them individually and so we just let them stay where they were all around in, in the area and then Robin got on the microphone and prayed for each person uh, and let them know that you know the distance doesn't matter whether they're 10 feet away or a thousand feet away you know the Holy Spirit can touch them and heal them and uh, so it was a very nice prayer that she gave 
Hey there, I have something very exciting I want to share with you. The new Dreamcatcher Journal. It's geared to help you catch your dreams with over 50 scriptures, inspirational words, and revelations, all pointing to dreams and dream interpretation. In the back, there's a quick reference that helps you with colors. Maybe you keep waking up at the same time or you have a favorite number that follows you. 44 different time scriptures, I call them, to help you find out what it is the Lord is saying to you straight from the Bible symbols that you can compare your dreams with and find the scripture that might help you interpret your dream in addition there's a hundred and ninety five different symbols from past dream interpretations that will help you to catch your dream order yours today We've just returned from St. Mark where we did a Bible study. We talked to some pastors and some teachers about justification and sanctification. And then another lady shared the story of the vine and the branches. We've come back to the hotel. We have a couple hours before we go and do a crusade. And most of the people are beside the pool, but I have found a nice shady place to stay out of the sun for a while. Don't go away. We'll be back. So I had a dream when I was in the Philippines and in the dream I was in Hawaii and the waves there are really big. It was like the, um, I don't know if it's called like the Bonsai Pipeline or something like that, but one of those places where the waves are just like a tsunami, just massive waves. And I'm, I'm standing there and every time the wave would come, I would dive deep and it wouldn't it wouldn't crush me and I would come out but I kept popping up and then it would be another one and I dive deep and it wouldn't crush me and it was just like a series of it so it was a combination of yay I've survived and oh my gosh another one's coming <laughs> and it, that, that was it in the dream but it really um it like shook me so I'm curious what your interpretation is of that well Think of the scripture when the enemy comes in like a flood, that God's going to raise a standard. He's not raising a standard in this one. This is about the enemy and the flood coming in. But um, you're going deep. Deep calls to deep. And when you go deep in him, the, the crushing uh, force of the enemy can't harm you. It does, but it doesn't mean it stops there. As long as we're on earth, we're going to have tribulations and troubles. And each time you go deep again. And when you go deep, the enemy is going to keep coming. But you know where to go. You go deep. And, and the water is usually the Holy Spirit in a dream. But Satan counterfeits everything that God does. And so the wave is the counterfeit. And God's asking you to go deep. Just go deep. Wow. That's really good. That's awesome. Thanks so much for sharing. You're welcome. Yeah, 
We've arrived at the church where we're going to be doing a Bible study. We were here yesterday with 77 men and women came, mostly pastors and teachers, to learn about more about the Bible and about the Lord. This is where we're going. How are you? Good, good. How about you? Good. Hi. Oh, l'amour qui me dégaine, c'est de pour en Afrique, c'est deux fois le dernier. Et puis, now Haiti is right there. Et puis, Haiti, c'est là, il est dans le cœur. Oh, girl, I used to pretend I closed my eyes and pretend that my skin was brown. Oh, lui, il aime des jeunes, il aime de prier, il fait mes jeux, et puis tout comme un fêcher de boule. Yes, I'm good. And I open my eyes and I'm always white. Et vous, 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 j'ai vraiment pas, ouais. Aujourd'hui, on va parler de avec nous le Saint-Esprit. Et nous justification et sanctification. Nous nous parler concernant la puissance de la lumière. Et comment nous faire ça. Oui, le Saint-Esprit met des nous dans un zone. It's important that we know Jesus isn't on the earth. Well, it's important that we know Jesus is on the earth. He's on the right side of the Father. Well, he's not on the earth. He's on the right side of the Father. Let me do it. Let me do it. Can you show me? Walk with me? Can you show me? Let me do it. Let me do it. Let me do it. What? Yes. Yes. I haven't really experienced a, a miracle this trip yet, but it's, it's not over yet. But it seems like every time there's something that happens that's miraculous. And uh, I was telling uh, you, Robin, about uh, an experience we had, and you were there, you were with us in Haiti when that happened uh, several years ago. Uh, a pastor whom uh, I have remained in contact with, a Haitian pastor, uh, uh, I, well, he came to the guest house where we were staying. I had told him by email that we were going to be there. And uh, so he showed up and he said, uh, Brother Paul, uh, I need you to help me because my wife is in the hospital. She's been in the hospital for a whole month and she can't even get out of bed. And uh, I said, well, why, was she, why is she in the hospital? He said she had her appendix removed. And uh, he said, they won't let her go unless I pay the bill. And the bill is $1,200 and I don't have $1,200. Right. Uh, so we, w several of us uh, got with him and prayed with him over the situation and then I had an appointment away from the guest house for about you know not too far away and I said uh, pastor can you wait here uh, for about two hours and I should be back he said yes when I came back he said I have good news a friend of mine a pastor friend of mine uh, called me and said that my wife is at home miracle uh, he had uh, his pastor friend had called the hospital on his behalf and said and negotiated a deal where they'd let the, his wife go if we promised to pay $200. So I gave him $200. I said, go pay the hospital. And then we went over, a number of us, including you, Robin, went over to uh, their house and we prayed for his wife. And Helen, who was with us, uh, explained to the woman, the reason you can't get out of bed and you get dizzy is because they didn't get you up and you need to sit up in bed and stand up if you can as many times as you can a day and very soon you'll be walking around 
that was, I believe, a Friday. Monday, we went back to visit, and she was walking around. Yeah. So that's how God works. Well, uh, voodoo is very real. And very simply, what it is is satanic worship. Uh, oftentimes, uh, well, the whole, uh, a large par portion of the population of Haiti uh, are involved with voodoo. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they will occasionally go to see a voodoo priest or a priestess because they have a problem in their life. Maybe a child is sick or they are looking for a promotion at their job or they, in some way they want uh, some supernatural help. And the, they pay the voodoo priest or priestess to make magic. And oftentimes it will involve the sacrifice of an animal. And, uh, and the, apparently it, it works uh, to a degree and uh, that's why they continue to do it and that's why they're they come up with money to pay for these things because satan does have power yeah um his in his end game though is death and destruction yes. and uh when we in the united states hear uh commercials about get your own spirit guide what the average american doesn't understand is those are demons. Yes. Stay far away. You do not want a spirit guide unless it's the Holy Spirit. Right, amen. Uh, because they, once they get in you, they will seek to destroy you. Mm -hmm. um, but I've seen a, a number of people in Haiti that, that have uh, evil spirits, uh, demons in them. And in fact, Robin and I were involved with one situation uh, with a uh, young woman who had a demon in her, and uh, and I'm, I was behind the woman, kind of lightly holding her, you know, kind of comforting her, and Robin was in front of her, trying to get the woman to look her in the eyes, because she wanted to get that, that demon's attention, and, and she could not catch the eyes of that woman. She kept her eyes closed, so she couldn't see Robin. <laughs> but um, it, is, it is devil worship, and... Uh, uh, it's something that the people don't, uh, you know, they don't really understand the destructive power of it. They, they look to it for actually for help. Yes. Uh, many voodoo priests and priestesses have changed allegiance uh, and gone with Jesus Christ Amen. when they realize that he has much more power yes. and that he's not out to destroy them. He's out to make their life better and to bless them. And uh, it, it's kind of a funny relationship. I remember hearing a story about one woman that went to a voodoo priest, I think with a, because of a, a sick child, and he did his incantations or whatever he did, and I think she came back two or three times. The child didn't get any better. He said, uh, I think I can't help you. I think you should go to see the, the pastor of the, the, the local church and ask him to pray for you in the name of Jesus. So it's like, what? <laughs> Here's a voodoo priest sending a woman to to go to a pastor to pr to uh, pray to Jesus Christ. So it's it's kind of an un unreal situation that's hard to understand. Yeah, yeah. Wow. How long have you been doing this? I started in 1993, so I guess that's 24 years now. Mm -hmm. I started. Uh, supporting those two pastors uh, that I, we were talking about earlier and uh, started coming down here four times a year and bringing money really to provide their needs so that they could uh, plant churches and uh, you know bring Bibles and anything that they needed you know and you know as we as I was I, I was able to start a uh, nonprofit corporation and we got to the point where we were sending $35,000 a month and not to the, just those two, but to right. all of the pastors who we had taken on and, um, and just in, in support of all of the churches that had been planted. So it became quite a big operation at one point. Uh, I kind of felt like we were angling to put everyone in, on, in the Haitian population on a salary. <laughs> and it got a little burden, a little burdensome. <laughs> Now, I know that you've traveled to other countries, too, you, but Haiti seems to have your heart. 
It does. It does. Uh, you know, God prepared me with, uh, you know, it's another story, but uh, God prepared my heart to, uh, for Haiti and gave me a heart for Haiti, I should say, uh, back when I was 19, 20 years old. Uh, I saw the oppression that they were under, uh, under that uh, dictator, Papa Doc de Valier, and I just wanted to raise an army, uh, Michel, um, you know, a uh, mercenary army, go in and take over the country, <laughs> kick him out, and bless the people. Yeah. And, but, you know, here I'm a white boy, 19 or 20, I don't speak the language, I'm not the right color, I have no money and no military training, <laughs> so I just had to give it up <laughs> until the opportunity came along to start support, supporting a couple of pastors that needed financial support. So. Well, Paul, I am so glad that I got to meet you, that you're part of my life, and I'm, the opportunity that, that we have through Christ to do His work, is, it's humbling and it's a privilege that I'm just glad that I found you so we could be, I could be part of it. Oh, hey, <laughs> Robin, it's so good, good to have you on these uh, trips. Uh, you are such a blessing, yeah. such a mature Christian woman, mm -hmm. and it's great to have you. Walking, talking, debating, and arguing with God is a lighthearted collection of short stories depicting some of Robin's real-life experiences and testimonies. The three-book series is now available at Amazon.com. We have driven and driven way up the side of a mountain, and we're going to do a crusade here tonight. Let me show you where we are. We're going to be setting up music here. You've seen the music was brought in the back of the truck and on motorcycles. And this is the praise team. And this is Isabel meeting the locals. They've cleaned the area for us. You can see they're burning the trash that they've cleaned up for us. Beautiful country. That's part of our team there. That's Paul and Helen, our leaders. And ST, he's a friend from LA as well. See, they're cleaning up for us. We're getting ready to do our first crusade of the trip. And right over my shoulder is a flag. That's a voodoo temple. We are bringing the gospel to the front yard of the voodoo temple. We just finished with the crusade. There was about 150 people that came out. It was a wonderful time. I'm ready to go to bed. We'll see what's going to happen tomorrow. I can hardly wait. Next time on Dreamcatcher, my missionary trip to Haiti continues. You'll meet Helen, a woman who has literally devoted her life to the Haitian people. She also hears from the Lord in remarkable ways. She shares some pretty amazing dreams. But the one that touched me the most is something that I'm not sure was a dream as much as maybe a supernatural experience. Watch and you determine was this a dream or something else.